Hello, everyone. How are you? I am so excited. My name is Lenise McGee. I am the Sister Circle Leader for Wives and Waiting in Milwaukee. And this is actually our last meeting of 2020. And so if you have been with us for any point of time of the year, you know that we meet every third Monday of the month this year towards, I think after March, March or April, we started doing virtual, of course, due to COVID. So um, we kept it going and kept meeting. And so our platform, how we, we normally meet is every third Monday of the month at 6 p.m. We have someone come and they encourage you spiritually. And then we have someone encourage you naturally. So we um, combine them together because we know our foundation is spiritually in the word, but then we know we have to naturally live in this world, right? And so I'm, I'm excited that we've been doing that and we've been consistent. And so I also want to make an announcement for those that have been um, following us on our local Sister Circle page, Wives and Waiting. We will be closing that down so that we can streamline everything. I did, send, I did put a post in the group. So make sure that you have liked our main page, the Wives and Waiting page, or you can, and also come to our group, the WIW group, that you can stay in contact in everything that we're doing because it, this is not just a local group. Of, of course, we are worldwide. So we want to make sure that you are aware of everything that we have going on. And next year, 2021, we are going to continue to meet um, at our local sisters. But what we're going to do is we're going to do private Zoom meetings versus just the Facebook Live. So I will make sure that if you're on my email list to get our upcoming meetings, we will be meeting every fourth Monday of the month starting next year versus every third Monday of the month. So we'll still keep that going. That's the only difference for our circle until we can meet back in person. Of course, we will be doing that. I want to get all those announcements out, okay? Um, so I just praise God for you guys. And today I'm super, super excited. We are talking about knowing your worth. And the title and topic today is knowing your worth and collecting my pieces, reclaiming my power. Woo! This is so great to end this year by stating reclaiming my power. Reclaiming my power. Because some of us are feeling powerless, if we were to be very honest. Everything that has happened throughout 2020. Woo! Some of us said, I'm still out of here from 2019 trying to get myself together. Because if we be truthfully honest, some stuff has started in 2019 and we're still trying to reclaim and get our life back in order. But we wanted to end this year giving you practical steps spiritually and naturally how to reclaim your power. So if you're okay with that, say amen and hallelujah anyhow. So dear Heavenly Father, we invite you into this conversation. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. And we thank you for using us as a vessel. And so today I am so excited to have the powerful, the anointed evangelist Patricia Howard. And I probably butchered your last name. So she's going to have to correct me because I love this woman of God. She is amazing. I actually met her because we did this book together. I mean, I don't have any left, but she has some. So you should connect with her to order some because they are powerful, okay? But we did this book together, tying the knot between ministry and the marketplace. That's basically what we do here um, at the local Christian circle in Milwaukee. We, we tie the spiritually and naturally together. How do you do that? And so she has a powerful section in here. She's a powerful woman of God. And I met her and she just has this heart of gold. And when you meet her, it's just like, you feel like you've known her forever. And she has such an inviting spirit. And she's so talented. I told her, like, I literally watch her and look up to her. So I can, I'm like, one day I'm going to be like that. Yes. Yeah. She says, she says the standard. Okay. Yes, she does. She really does. And so I'm like, okay, what is she doing? So I can get up on that. That's how, that's how it's supposed to be done. And okay, that's how it's supposed to be done. So yeah, she is a native from um, Milwaukee. She spent her first 39 years of her life worshiping here at Greater Galilee along with her parents. 
she is um, married. She has beautiful children. And today she is going to bring some word of encouragement. And so because, you know, we are virtual. How do we show some love? We just give some hearts, you guys. So we're going to give some hearts. Give some hearts. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so much for being obedient to the Lord. Thank you so much for coming and for sharing with us. I'm so excited to hear what God has placed on your heart to share with the women and some of the men that might listen in as well, those that are listening live and those that will hear the replay. God bless you, woman of God. I'm going to step back and give you the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lanice McGee, now you that, talking about me, you're the powerhouse. I saw you were a powerhouse before we even met. I just observing you, seeing how wonderful woman you are. But I just thank you for inviting me today uh, to be on your platform for wives in waiting in Milwaukee. It is uh, seemingly to be a, just a powerful organization, empowerment connection seminars that you do every month. And I'm just grateful to be doing the last month of December 2020. Hallelujah. We made it through. And so this is just awesome. I am really, really just have passion for the subject that you have today that you have given me. And I'm just going to share a little bit with you all. Knowing your worth and collect your pieces, reclaiming your power reclaiming your power. I think that is a mighty subject. It's a lot right in that. But I want to add with that Psalms 139, 14, if you will allow me to, to give that scripture. For I know, no, I'm sorry. No, that was 29. That's Jeremiah. Psalms 139, 34. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Hallelujah. Wonderfully we are made. That is powerful. That word. Father, we just thank you this evening, Lord, as we go in your word and see what you have already said and planned for us, we will enjoy it. And we thank you as you bless it in Jesus name. Defining, I just want to define self-worth. First of all, what the, uh, uh, I saw this on, on the internet and it says defining self-worth, the sense of one's own value remember that word value, or worth as a person. I think that one part of it, but that's one part of it, but the other aspect is being able to understand how much of a difference you have made in any given situation with the contribution you have made. That is so awesome that we have to realize that we are of value. That's the first thing to re to realize in having self-worth, that whatever you are, wherever you are in life, whatever you're doing, you have some value. There will always be someone that's telling you you can't be, that you have no worth. There'll be someone that's treating you like you have no worth. Don't let it be you. You have to believe and know what you are. So let's see, what, what are we? As the word said already, that we're wonderfully made. We know that we're created by him. So that it's out of our control to say, I'm nothing because we know that everything God made is good and he made us. So that's the first part of knowing that you have some self-worth. This year has given us opportunity to have a shift in our lives. Whether we wanted it or not, the shift is happening. We have gone through so many things, seen so many things, and to know that you have worth in just making it to December, that you have value because some way you figured out how to hang on. Some way you figured out that I have something that's 
really good about me or something that I just got to hang on to see what's going to be a change in my life. I have three points I want to make to you, and I'm going to be out of your way. These points, starting with number one, you have to change your mind. You have to have a mindset to believe, to change your mind. You have to make your mind up that whatever happens, and that's where that shift comes in this year, whatever you see, whatever is going on around you, that you have made your mind up that you're going to believe. Hallelujah. And when you make your mind up, I'm going to give you scriptures because we don't have time to go all through them, but please write them down in Romans 12, 11, about changing your mind to believe what God says. Never seek your importance through the standards of this world. The standards, what we're seeing, we can see that the world standards are, will fail us. The world standards, people will fail us. Things, organizations will fail us. So we can't br bring our standards to be by that standard. We have to believe God's plan. If many of you know the wonderful man, in Milwaukee of God, Andre Ellis. I love his uh, a quote or his slogan, what he goes by. And he has shown it to be true that he goes by God's plan. He's living the God plan. That's what we have to do. We have to believe God's plan. We have to change our own mindset. We have to change our words to speak what God says about you. Don't go about by your feelings, how you feel, what you see. You believe God's word, then I'm going to speak God's word. What does Jeremiah 29, 11 says? He knows the plan. That's the plan that we have to go by. He knows the plan I have for you. I For I know it. The plan I have for you declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, your welfare, hallelujah, to give you a future and a hope. Then a little in Romans 5, 8 says, hallelujah, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. So we can't go by the plan or what people are saying, what somebody thinks of me, or when I make mistakes, because we make mistakes. We have to reinvent ourselves. We have to, to go and, and say, well, now I got to make a shift. I got to change and go this way, or I, I just got to do something different. It's not to go by who says I'm not what they think I should be. Every time someone says something, every time you see something, whether it's about your race, whether it's about your your who you are as a woman or as a man, you're going to believe, what did God say? He made me. So what authority does anybody else have in my life? Because he loved me so much. He loves me. He loved me before I even came to him. He loved me before he even drew and I finally yielded to receive him as my savior. I am going to believe who created me, no matter what I see, no matter what I hear. And then two, be grateful. Be grateful. Gratefulness, gratitude brings multiplies, it multi multitudes, it multiplies what you have. Jesus showed us, showed us that when he was feeding, he from the lunch that the children had, he took and fed 5,000. And every time he fed them, every time he gave the food, he thanked the Lord. He didn't just do, and I heard someone saying this th this morning, praise the Lord. He didn't just say how we'll say our verse at the beginning of when we're eating. Every time God, Jesus showed us how to be grateful. Every time he broke that bread and made it multiplied, every time he thought, thanked his father, it multiplied and it multiplied. That's what we're to do. 
to be grateful in our situations, to be grateful in whatever we are bold in, to be grateful and thank the Lord. Believing for greater, because he said already that he's going to give us greater. He knows the plans he has for us. Until I see it, I'm going to be grateful today. I'm going to be grateful for whatever I have, whatever situation. I'm going to thank the Lord. I'm going to agree with him. Agreement in Luke 1, 46 through 45. Mary was so grateful. She agreed with the Lord when he came and he said, this 14-year-old girl, you're going to carry the Son of God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? He came, excuse me, and said, you're going to carry the Son of God. The angel came and told her. She was grateful. She agreed. Did she understand everything? No. Did she would worry? I'm sure she had some worry because she was engaged to Joseph, never had been with him. And now she's carrying the son of God. She agreed and in her agreeing with God, she sang praises. She did a praise song to him. Hallelujah. Read Luke 1, 46 through 45. While she was pregnant, she agreed with God at being pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then gratitude causes us to be noticed by God. When we're grateful, when we show this gratitude, it causes us to be noticed by him. If you uh, go to Luke 17, 11 through uh, 19, and see the story of the 10 lepers. The lepers, all he healed them. They said, oh, have mercy upon me, Jesus, as Jesus is going through. Have pity upon me, Lord. And he healed them of leprosy. You know what leprosy is, just boils and their skin was just hanging on their bone, just horrible sores and horrible pain, horrible smell, horrible looking. And God healed them. Only one came back and said, thank you. And Jesus noticed that. Out of all, where are the others? Only one came and he blessed him because he noticed him. Why? Because of his gratefulness. So finally, number three, action in reclaiming your power. Actions in reclaiming your power. If I can't care about me and care about you at the same time, You've got to go. That's the kind of mindset you got to have. If you can't care about yourself and your worthness while you're caring about somebody else, then they got to go or it's got to go or whatever you're doing, it's got to change because you have to have a mindset of that. I'm picking up my pieces. I'm picking up everything that's falling off that I need to keep moving forward, to keep going forward. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for anything that's happened that I didn't want to happen or that I felt was just the end. I see I'm still here. It's not the end. I see that God has given me power. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I can keep moving forward. I can keep on going forward because he's given me the power to reclaiming everything that he already gave me. I'm just going to pick up and I'm going to keep moving and he's going to manifest in my life. There's a story of a little bird, about big as a sparrow. The bird was sitting on the branch and he's looking around and just enjoying himself. And he's looking and thinking, oh, everything looks wonderful and everything is just fine in my life. And the wind began to blow. The wind was just blowing like a blizzard. And the bird was looking like, what am I going to do? So he said, I'll jump down on another branch. And he jumped down on that branch and he saw that he had support from that branch safety that it offered and the strong winds couldn't tear him down. 
he saw that he was able at first, even before he jumped to the branch, he saw that I got, I forgot, I got wings. I can use my wings. And he went to that branch that held him and been and had support. Life is like that for us. Things happen. We, we everything looked fine before 2020. Everything, some things look fine, and some things, you know, you thought I'm gonna get it together because, like she said, like Lenny said, uh, two, 2019 was so crazy. And I know 20, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to jump on a branch. But those branches, if you look at them like people or organizations, they couldn't support you because what happened this year, everything tore down. But if you look inside of you, if you look like the bird realized he had wings, if you realize you have wings like a bird, that you have power, that God, because you've chosen him, he's given you power to be able to fly. What does it say in Isaiah, I believe it's in Isaiah 41, that he will mount up, you know, mount you up like wings. He will give you so you won't grow faint. He will give you the power. He has given us the power to reclaim. He has given us. So we're going to change our mindset. We're going to believe and change our mindset. We're going to move and gratitude and thanking God for what he has done. And then we're going to reclaim all the pieces and we're going to give it to God because he is our burden carrier. He is, he has the yoke. He will, he said, give it to him and his burdens are light and he will take care of us. Know your worth. Know you are valued because he made you valuable. Don't go by what you think. Don't go by what others say. Go by what you know. God's word is true. And I guarantee you, I'm a witness of it. He will manifest in your life what you desire. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bless all of you. Okay. Me and that mute, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that was good. And it ties right in. Let's just um, show some hearts and some love for that message because honestly, it ties right into what God has put on my heart as well. So, thank oh you so God. much, woman of God. I am so thank grateful you for having you. me. Bless you all. Bless you. Now, walk in it. Yes. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And so I praise God for that woman of God. I praise God for you guys joining us today. And so, as I said before, we always start off with the natural, with the spiritual, then we go into the natural on the same topic, knowing your worth and collecting your pieces, reclaiming your power. And so um, this year i'm ending it <laughs> so normally i have a guest speaker come but today i am ending 2020 and so um, i love what the evangelist talked about the three steps and one of them she said was agreeable and so i'm going to ask you to do something i'm going to ask you to agree with me on something today um i'm going to ask you just to take a deep breath maybe close your eyes. Really, I just need you to listen to the words of this song. I don't own the rights to the music. A friend of mine sent me this song and it just really, really touched my heart. And I just felt it was really appropriate for what we are talking about today when it comes to knowing your worth, right? Collecting our pieces and what? Reclaiming our power. So again, I'm just asking you just to find a moment of silence to just really sit and hear the words to the song and take it in. Worship 
And I bless your holy name For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you How many know that tonight? There is no one else like you For you kept going with that because <laughs> I was ready to go in, okay? But um, I wanted to, to play that, and that really had to do actually with the next point that she, uh, that Evangelist had talked about was being grateful. Whew. Can you just think of one thing in your mind that you can be grateful for? In that moment, that's how we can say that he, I'm ready to sing, y'all, deserves the glory. He deserves the honor, right? That's how we can lift our hands and worship during COVID. That's how we can lift our hands and worship during racial tension. That's how we can lift our hands when we have lost things. That's how we can lift our hands when we don't know how we're going to pay our bills how we can lift our hands when we know who deserves the glory, when we understand who deserves the honor. Whew. So today we are talking about knowing your worth. And so I'm so excited to talk about this and end our last session 2020 talking about that. And so again, with COVID-19 going on, with a lot of racial tensions across the country, I can say, and I don't know if you would agree with me, that it has had an, a lot of effect and mental effect on people, right? I don't know about you. I don't know if it has affected you or if you know anybody that it has had an effect on. But if you do, name some things that people have lost during this time. If it wasn't you, maybe it was someone around you. I know that during this season, during this year, people have lost careers. Who would have thought that all those JC Penney's would have went out of business? Um, GNC's, all these large companies would have closed down during companies that have been here for a long time, businesses closed, restaurants closed. We couldn't go eat in public restaurants anymore. Who would have thought all of this would have happened? People have lost their homes during this season. People have lost cars, people have lost pets, but most importantly, people have lost people, right? People have lost loved ones, people have lost friends, people have lost things that what are irreplaceable. People have lost things that are valuable to them. So can you understand why somebody today might say, I don't know my worth. I don't know what to do. That's why we have to go back. That's why I want to play that song. We have to go back to a place of, of gratitude in God and, and reach down deep so that we know where the glory and the honor is and where it belongs to. Right? 
Some people are really, really stressed. High level of stress. Why? Because not only are they dealing with loss, they are worried about shelter. They're worried about security of food, right? They are worried about safety of their children, safety of their family, safety of their loved ones. There is so much to be worried about. There are so many things that people have the right and, and, and to be concerned about that. I would say, yes, I can understand why you're worried about that. I can understand why you might be losing some sleep about that. I can understand your concern when it comes to that. So a lot of people are even asking, when will life go back? I don't know if it's ever going to go back, but when will it go back to our new normal? When will we get that back? And some people don't even want that back. So that's what 2020 has been, right? It's, it's been difficult for some people. So when you lose something that is irreplaceable, when you lose something that valuable, I think you would agree that some people really do need to know how can I pick up the pieces again? How can I reclaim my power again when I feel powerless? When I had no control over COVID, I had no control over the things that have been happening in my world today. I feel powerless. So I'm happy that we are ending 2020 with this discussion and, and feel free to put in a chat too because we learn and we, we gather from each other on how you picked up the pieces or how you are picking up the pieces. Some of us are picking them up. Some of us are figuring it out. And how you figuring it out, it might encourage somebody else. Look, I can figure it out too. You may have lost your brother. You have, may have lost your sister, your mother, your father. Maybe if you say, I lost them, but this is what I'm doing. You're going to encourage somebody else. Look, you can pick up your pieces. Even in loss, you can reclaim your power. Right? Together, that's what we have in 2020. One thing that we have is we figured out how to connect. We figured out how to use this virtual world. We figured out how we are going to make this work somehow, right? Coming together with our neighbors. Coming to, well, you know what? They don't have food, but I got food. They don't have a ride, but I have a ride. They don't have a job. Let me tell them how they can um, start a business because they know how to do A, B, and C, right? We have figured out how to come together as a community like never before. Some of us during 2020 have gained new insight. So think about what have you gained, right? So for 2020, thinking about everything that we lost and, and some have lost and some have gone through, I just wanted us to end it in a position of gratitude. In a position of gratitude to encourage us when we don't feel encouraged that even in the storm, there is light. Even in the storm, we can make it through. That even in the rain, guess what? We need the rain for the grass to grow, right? So what can we get out of this? Some of us have done things we never done before. Some of us have, have reached out to family and reconnected to family like we never have before. Some of us have started business. Some of us have written books. Some of us have started, some of us have done things that we didn't do before. And guess what? Some of us have just made it another day. And if you just made it another day, I say, hallelujah, anyhow, you've done something that, to, that is to be celebrated, right? You figured it out. So let's, we're not even comparing the fact that you are breathing. The fact that you are here is to be celebrated. You are here. And so that's what I wanted to kind of end 2020 talking about that we all made it here and we all together can reclaim our pieces. We all together can move forward together. So I wanted to say... Somebody might be listening and say, well, what does that have to do with worth, right? Why would anybody worth be down? And so when, when you think about what we talked about and some of the things people have listed that have been lost, we, I want to be realistic here. 
that, uh, that sometimes we place our value, our value in people, places, and things. I say that one more time. Sometimes we place our value in people, places, and things. And what has happened in 2020, we have lost all of those things. We have lost people, places, and things. So you must understand when we place our value in those things and we lose them, we can lose ourselves. We can look around and not know who we are anymore. We can look around and say, what's going to happen? Who am I? What must I do? How can I go on? So knowing your worth, reclaiming your pieces, and getting your power back at the end of 2020, going into 2021 is so important to know that although, yes, you have lost people, we are not going to deny that truth. But you may have lost things. You may have lost things that are irreplaceable, but we want you to go back to the fact that that does not devalue your worth, that you are still worthy. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I'm going to throw a scripture in here, which comes from 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. And it says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. And that's what we have to kind of remember. The things that are unseen is what we have to keep our eyes fixed on. Why? If 2020 didn't teach us anything else. It should have taught us that everything in life is seasonal, even relationships. Everything has its season. The only thing that's eternal is our relationship and our position with our Heavenly Father. And understanding our position with Him helps us understand our position within ourselves. And that's how we pick up these pieces again. That's how we know our worth. Understanding that who we are rests in who He is. That no matter what we've lost, that we haven't lost ourselves. We haven't lost ourselves, right? Everything in life is seasonal. Every relationship is seasonal. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Our relationship with our children, our relationship with our parents, our relationship with the love of our life, all of that has an end date. And it hurts. Whoo, my goodness. My goodness, how do we pick up the pieces again? We have to pick up the pieces again. We have to honor the memory, honor the journey, but not lose ourselves in it. And that's where we're at. Honoring everything, every, every gift of the things that we have, every gift of every relationship we have but knowing that we still have to honor the gift that we're going to give to other people by honoring ourselves by moving forward. Move forward. Move forward. Push through. Push through the pain. Push through the hurt. Talk to somebody. Share that it hurts. Share your pain. You don't have to be in the dark by yourself. There are people that will pray for you, with you. Amen. So that's why it's important that we understand this. This is important because we have to find peace and contentment in that which is eternal. And, and, and it starts with finding gratitude, even in our season of loss. How can I find gratitude? What am I grateful for? So I'm going to go back to the natural. We have to stop looking at the roles that people play and, and listen to the lines that they say. We have to start looking at character of people. We have to stop looking at things that people own and we have to stop associating ourselves with the things that we own or the roles that we have because that does not place our value. The title you have, the house you own, the cars you drive, all of that is temporal and we see that now too. There's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have those nice things, but again, we don't place our value in them because even if you own a house, 
guess what? When you're in a situation like this, you can even sell that house. And guess what? It's not yours anymore. Even stuff you own, you can get rid of. Right? Right. So today, he deserves the honor. Again, think about one thing that you can give honor to him to be grateful for. So I'm going to give you, I'm almost done, you guys, give you the definition of worth. Um, and again, what is worth? It's something that we place value in, right? It's the level that we think something is valuable at. So what do you think you are valued at? Self-worth means how do you value yourself? But in the sense of self-value means that you understand I am worthy. Excuse me. I'm worthy despite if I don't have a job. I am worthy despite the loss. I am still worthy despite the things that I've been through. I am still yet worthy. I respect and treat myself with worth. So worthiness and self-esteem goes together to me. They're, they, they align together. And so in self-esteem, we think and we feel, it's what we think and we feel about ourselves. And the self-worth recognizes that you're greater than all of those things. You're greater than any of the things, you know, the tangible things, right? It's a deep understanding and knowing of your value. They work together. So I'm going to give you three steps. See, something about the three. She gave three too, right? Three steps in how you know your worth, how to get to that space. If you have lost some things this year and you're feeling like, I don't know, I'm in that space and I need to pick up the pieces. My, my, my heart is heavy. I'm not feeling worthy. I don't know what you might be going through, but I'm going to give you three steps to help you on today. Step one is first understand, this is so important, nothing that you have or your ability to perform is attached to your worthiness. Again, nothing that you have, not your house, not your car, not your marriage, not your children, nothing that you have, not any way that you can perform, not how great you can be, now, how great you are on the job, nothing that you can perform is attached to your worthiness. Why is that important? Because if you lose all that, guess what? Your worthiness goes with that loss. So understand, not, your worthiness is not attached to things or your performance. First of all, that goes back to that mindset. Get your mindset right. My worthiness is not attached to people, places, or things. My, I'm worthy. You are worthy just because you are. Yeah, it's that simple. You are worthy just because you are without definition or explanation. I do not have to, you do not have to explain your worthiness to anyone. If they don't understand your worthiness, they don't need to be in your, you, they don't, it's a, it's a privilege to be in your presence. That's how you have to think. You're worth the love, you're worth the respect and the honor without anyone's consent. So that's step one. Step two, we can't compare ourselves, right? I can't compare my worthiness to somebody else's worthiness, right? We have to challenge also our thinking. What are we saying to ourselves? Some of us have become bullies. Y'all know what a bully is? Y'all are bullying yourself and your thoughts. Man, if I, if I could hear some of the things that people think to themselves, you would say that person is a bully. But guess what? Your thoughts are bullying yourself. We, that's step two. Stop bullying yourself with comparison and, and the things that you are saying to yourself. And finally, step three. These are the three steps in getting back to knowing your worth. The final step is to protect your worth by setting boundaries. When you are worthy and you understand your worth, you set healthy boundaries and you speak those boundaries. You don't allow people cross boundaries when you understand your worth. I don't care if we're in a pandemic. I don't care if racial tension is going. You set boundaries. So we're picking up our pieces. We're holding our head up high as a black woman, as a black man, whatever you're, I don't care. You're worthy. And I'm going to set those healthy boundaries today. I'm going to monitor my self-talk today. And guess what? I know, not based on people, places, or things, I am worthy. 
Those are the three things you need to do to know your worth. And so how do we collect the pieces? So the title again is know your worth, collect your pieces and reclaim your, your, your power. So how do you collect your pieces? What are the pieces? The pieces are forgiveness, acceptance, joy, and peace. This is so important. We need to collect those pieces back because for some odd reason, we allow, to, we think that forgiveness is not for ourselves. So I'm gonna need us in order to know our worth, in order to reclaim our power, we need to understand that forgiveness unto ourselves is part of that. So go back and collect forgiveness for yourself. Collect those things, guess what? Because you're not perfect. But you're gonna learn from your mistakes. You're gonna grow from your mistakes. And you're gonna accept yourself. And when you do that, guess what? You can find joy and you can have peace even in the midst of a COVID situation. Even in the midst of some of you going through a divorce. Even in the midst of the loss of a loved one. Even in the midst of whatever you're going through. When you understand that I have the right to collect my pieces back. I have the right to forgive myself. I have the right to accept the things that I have been through. I might not accept your actions, but guess what? It happened, and now I'm going to move forward. That's what we have to do. And so we have to become relentless, right? You know how the bill collectors, okay, in collecting things, what, what do we collect? The bill collectors know they have a right to collect that money. And they're going to call you at all times of the night. They do not care. They will even come up with a different number to make it look like they know you. Like, oh, this ain't an 800 number. They are relentless in collecting their debt. We have to be relentless in collecting our pieces so that we are whole and complete. So I'm going to collect everything that was already mine, but I released it. So I'm going back and I'm collecting forgiveness for myself. I'm going back and I'm collecting fact that I accept me. I accept me because I am a reflection of him. I'm going back and I'm accepting and collecting joy. I'm collecting my peace, a peace that passes all understanding. That's what we need in order to make it on today, in order to move forward. You guys, I'm almost done. And I thank you guys for staying with me because we had to remember, I think it's a song, um, the, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away right? And so when we collect our pieces and we have that joy, the world can't take it away from us because he didn't give it to us. Just like the world didn't give us our worthiness. When we understand that the world didn't give us our world worthiness, then we can walk with our head and we can know we're worthy because they can't take away something that they didn't give us because it's not theirs to take, right? Um, Philippians 4 and 7 says, then you will experience God peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And so that is where I want us to be at. I need him to protect our minds in 2020 leading into 2021. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. So he can continue to protect your mind even now. We don't have to end this year feeling unworthy. In fact, we're going to end this day this hour, this moment, holding our head up, knowing that we are worthy, even in the midst of loss, even in the midst of tears, even in the midst of fears, we are worthy. Why? Because he gives us peace that passes all understanding. And Hebrews 11 and 1 says, faith is a confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. And it gives us assurance about the things we can't see. So we need hope. And our hope rests in him. We know that we hope that things will get better. Trouble don't last always, right? And so that's what we have to rest in. That's what we have our peace in. That's how I can smile even when things are going the way they're going. Because I have hope, not in my ability, but in his. And I know he lives in me, right? So in closing, I want to say, by knowing your words, right? with those three steps and going back and collecting your pieces because they're yours. That is how you reclaim your power. That's how you reclaim it. When you know who you are and you hold your head up and you walk in your truth and you reclaim every piece because I walk in forgiveness, because I walk in joy, 
because I walk in acceptance, because I walk in peace, because I know I'm worthy to do that. I have the power and you can't take it from me. No one can take it from me because you didn't give it to me. You didn't give it to me. So that's how we reclaim our power in 2020. That's how we keep our power from moving forward and moving forward past 2020, 2021. We keep walking in that truth. We keep walking in his truth. Understanding yourself is the best gift because now you're living with the intention of not pleasing man. Not even pleasing your yourself up. I got to have this. I got to have that in order to be this. But no, you're making an impact now because I know that I'm worthy. I know that he made me worthy and I'm not living on conditions. I'm not living on conditions of if I have this, then I am that. If I go here, then I'm there. If I have this title, then I'm I'm no longer living on the conditions of world of the world. I'm no li- longer living on conditions of even my own thoughts. Right? I'm not living on those conditions. No, I'm, I'm throwing that away. I'm, I have a new mind and a new mindset. No more conditions. I'm loving myself unconditionally, and I'm walking forth in that truth. But now I'm living on the principles, and I'm not going to be moved just because other people are moved. I'm not going to um, be moved just because the situation has changed or shift, right? In fact, I am the one that shifts when I walk in the room. I shift the situation. I change the temperature when I walk in the room. Why? Because when somebody walks in the room that has confidence, it's something that happens. The whole atmosphere shifts. And that's who you are today. If you're listening to me, that's who you are. When you walk in the room, the whole temperature changes because worthiness just showed up. Honor just showed up. Peace just showed up. Joy just showed up. Love just showed up. Encouragement just showed up. And guess what? You transform everything that you touch. I praise God for you. Pray that your 2020 is blessed because again, it's not over and it's not done. I pray that your next year is better even than this year. And I pray that you understand your worthiness rests in the Father and not in anything that is temporal. I love you guys. I thank God for you guys. Thank you guys for being a part of the Wise and Waiting Ministry. Again, continue to follow us and connect with us. If you need prayer, I'm going to go ahead and put up the prayer um, email. You can Email your prayers to prayers at wiseandwaiting.com and definitely somebody will get back with you um, if you have any feeling of unworthiness. If you, if, not, if you just need prayer, you know, just reach out. We will definitely get back with you. Make sure, again, we're um, shutting down the Wise and Waiting Milwaukee page so we can just have one page for us all to gather together so that you don't miss anything. So make sure you're following the main page of Wives in Waiting. Again, follow the main page of Wives in Waiting because the Sister Circle page, the Milwaukee one, will be closing at the end of the year. This is a new year, y'all. This is a new year. We're going to go with a new mindset. I love y'all. I praise God for y'all. And um, remember, be blessed, live blessed because you're worthy of it. Not because I said so and not because of anything you've done or anything you could do. It's because he already said so. Love you. And I bless 